Sai is a loser whose daddy left him because he's a little bit and gets bullied by others, but everything changes when he becomes the demon king and all the girls want his demon babies. Years ago, Sai was just a baby when his guardian dubbed him the child of hope and protected him by giving him away to the church. In the present day, Sai is wandering a new city after getting off a train. Then the blue-haired girl carrying a wooden sword runs into him, and he sees her plump kitty between her legs. It was perfect. An old woman drops her luggage and Sai helps her out to carry her luggage. The blue-haired girl attacks him after thinking he is robbing her grandmother. The grandma calls her granddaughter an idiot for misunderstanding the situation. Then the girl apologizes to Sai and introduces herself as Junko, a student from Magic Academy. Sai tells her that he will also join the Magic Academy, and they both get into a magical train and go to the academy. She praises him for being a transfer student as transfer students are rare in the academy. Sai tells her that he wants to be Harry Potter and change the world by being a high priest. She is taken aback by his dreams and supports him completely. Junko tells Sai that she comes from the Sewerist family who has been protecting the empire for generations. She pulls out her sword as a tradition and asks him to hold it as a sign of their friendship. Then, they arrive at Walmart Hogwarts and Junko takes him on a tour around the academy. Junko leaves to go to class, and he wishes that they will be in the same class. Later a professor, Mitsuko notices him and asks him to join the other transfer students. She starts checking the student's physical condition using a bird spirit. The bird judges their health and future occupations. Then Sai goes to the bird and it judges Sai as a future demon king. The room explodes as they can't believe what they're hearing. The bird explains that Sai will one day become the greatest threat to society as the Demon King. The students start panicking and Mitsuko calms them down. A hundred years ago, there was a war started by a man who led demons to start chaos, and that man proclaimed himself as the Demon King. Mitsuko tells him to not think about it but warns Sai that he will be treated like shit in the academy due to his future. She talks about the possibility of him being bullied and even taking his own life due to the pressure, but she calms him down as she will make him a zombie if he dies and analyzes him all she wants. Then, they arrive at class and Mitsuko is his homeroom teacher. Sai joins the class and everyone panics as he is the Demon King. He tries to calm them down to not fear him while Junko watches with disgust on her face. Mitsuko tells him enough and seats him in the back of the class. Then Mitsuko wants to choose a new class representative and asks Junko to take over. One of the students, Maiwa, stands up and asks for the class rep to change. He nominates Sai to be the new class representation as he believes in his speech and wants Sai to prove himself as a good person. But Sai withdraws in support of Junko, becoming the class representation, and asks to join the cleaning committee to show his kindness instead. The whole class panics as the cleaning committee is known to destroy in order to protect secrets. Sai tries to explain himself as he didn't know that dumb information but Junko rises and curses him. She confronts Sai for destroying their oath of him wanting to change the world. The whole class misunderstands and thinks that he is responsible for ravaging her virginity. Junko has enough and challenges Sai to a duel. Maiwa supports Sai and tells them that the winner will become the class representation. Junko attacks him, but Sai dodges her attacks. Sai has enough and holds her from the back to explain that he has no evil intention towards her. Junko almost folds to his sweet words, but she attacks him again. He catches her sword and powers up. He starts going Super Saiyan and Mitsuko creates a protection shield. The class explodes and it leaves Junko naked and unconscious. Meanwhile, the rumor of him being a demon king spreads to the student council, and they want a piece of Sai's sweet cheeks. Later, Maiwa greets Sai in their dorm and starts showing his adoration. Sai tells Maiwa that he wants to go to the girl's dorm to talk to Junko. Maiwa tells him that Junko's room is on the second floor and that he needs to sneak in. Meanwhile, Junko starts thinking of Sai and his Riz in her room. Suddenly, Sai knocks on her window and she starts going berserk after getting embarrassed. The other girls notice them and Junko starts chasing Sai down with her sword. Then, Sai slips into the forest and stumbles upon a weird girl named Soga. She starts calling him her daddy and wants to have his babies quickly. Junko tracks them down and attacks Sai but Soga protects him. Soga pushes her melons to his face to protect him and Junko launches another attack. Sai opens his palms and shoots out a lightning bomb. His attack lays out Junko like she's Yansha, and a portal forms in front of them. From the portal, out comes an android observer named Karon. A few years ago at church, a little girl is crying like a little bit, and Sai goes to meet her. He gives her a small hairpin in the form of a bird, and walks away like a chad to the sunset. Back to the present, Karon shoots a gun at Junko and heals her injuries. Karon informs Sai that she received an order from the higher-up to observe him. She wants to question him regarding the incident with the headmaster present. 
Then, Soga suddenly disappears with only her clothes on the floor. Sai touches it, and she squeals as she turns herself invisible and runs away. Then, they go to the headmaster's office and Karon reports that Sai is innocent in the incident with no intention to harm anyone. The headmaster starts getting excited with the prospect of Sai becoming the Demon King. The headmaster informs Sai that Karon will watch over him all the time to prevent him from turning evil in others, from harming him like a bodyguard. Then Mitsuko tells Sai to see the bright side of the situation, and asks him how he exploded the classroom. Sai explains that he was just trying to protect himself and his powers had gone out of control. Mitsuko explains that his ability to control magic is below his ability to manipulate his mana. She hands him the student handbook and explains that he can use it to speak to other students through telepathy. Later, he struggles to go to sleep as Karon is there observing him. He tells her that he will go to sleep and Karon lies down next to him half naked. She starts teasing him that she will pull out his fat willy during the night and make him ravage her. But she tells him that she's joking. She leaves him and sleeps in his wardrobe. He looks to see her peeking at him, and she tells him that she's having fun being a creep. Weird, buddy. The next day, a hot girl meets Sai and introduces herself as the head of the girl's dorm, Fujiko. She holds his hand and starts rizzing him, wanting his demon king babies. In class, the students gossip about Sai bringing a cute girl like Karon as his slave. Sai goes to the toilet, and the boys are confused seeing Karon waiting for Sai to finish taking a sh**. Meanwhile, Sai pulls out his handbook and calls Fujiko, who is changing clothes. He asks her a favor, wanting to make up with Junko, and Fujiko is happy to help as a mediator. While Karon is roaming the toilet while looking at people's sausage, what the fu Fujiko asks Sai to meet her in private at Back Mountain to avoid Karon. Fujiko teaches Sai to deactivate Karon the android by pulling her tail. Afterward, Maiwa shows Sai where Back Mountain is and warns him that there are monsters there. Maiwa asks to come with him, but Sai refuses. Karon tells Sai that she will come with him, and it gives Maiwa the wrong idea. Maiwa starts celebrating Sai clapping another pair of cheeks, and Karon jokes around. Later, Sai and Karon arrive at Back Mountain and walk past a danger sign. Sai bends down to look for Karon's tail, and something whacks him for being a degenerate. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Karon starts covering her panties, and Sai explains that something just hit him. Karon detects that something is approaching them, and a demon dog appears. The dog attacks, and Karon pulls out her Glock to shoot it. But her bullet doesn't work, and Sai pushes her down to save her. The dog attacks them, and Sai uses his overpowered magic to defeat it in one strike. The dog turns into a cute little puppy, and Sai explains that he absorbs the dog's mana to purge it. Karon is surprised that he saved her, although all he has done so far is peeking at girls' panties and rizzing them like a creep. What more do you want from me? Suddenly, the dog starts attacking an invisible girl, and it turns out to be Soga that is spying on them. Karon goes to take Soga's clothes and bends over, and Sai sees his chance and pulls her tail like a toy to shut down Karon. Fujiko shows up and tells him that she will help him talk to Junko. She offers Sai to join the disciplinary committee, and he accepts her offer. Fujiko hands him magical drugs that will magically make him understand people's feelings. She explains to him to shoot the drug into Junko and himself so they will be connected. Fujiko leaves and Sai folds to her kindness. Then, Sai pulls Karon's tail again to activate her, and she doesn't remember anything. They hear Soba's voice and Sai sees the bird-shaped hairpin. He remembers her being the girl in his past and Soga jumps her naked body into Sai. She starts squirming her melons around and Karon gives her clothes to wear. Karon wants to report this to the FBI and Sai tries to negotiate. Sai begs Soga to help him and she agrees to change the narrative into her assaulting Sai. Instead, and Soga asks in a request for him to be her friend. Meanwhile, Junko is naked when Fujiko calls her. She asks Junko to meet Sai and lies about Sai threatening her to be the middleman. Junko agrees to meet Sai and Fujiko is happy that everything is going to her evil plans. She goes to her secret basement and talks to a chopped head about making the Demon King her slave and bitch. A few years ago, Fujiko is enjoying her normal life with her loving brother, when something horrible happened and the brother got clapped out of existence. Her mother tells her to bear the family name and become stronger. In the present, Fujiko is making moves behind the scenes to make Sai her slave before he becomes the Demon King. Meanwhile, Sai and Maiwa are enjoying a hot bath together. Maiwa praises his Demon King friend for being able to beat the sh** out of Junko, who is the public leader. Maiwa explains that someone like Junko fights for justice against students who practice dark magic for their evil deeds. Maiwa leaves and suddenly squeals like a little b Sai checks it out and finds Karon peeking as she is still observing Sai. She asks to see Sai's willy size as she is curious, but Sai declines her degenerate request. Then, Fujiko calls him to inform him that she has made arrangements for him to meet with Junko. 
The next day, Sai meets with the student council as he wants to join the disciplinary committee. The council president, Lily, warns him that he will become enemies with troublemakers and that he has to be able to take care of himself. The school announces Sai leading the disciplinary committee and the students start speculating that he will do something horrible. Later, he prepares the drug gun given to him by Fujiko and plans to turn off Kuron again. He reaches for Kuron's sweet cheeks to find her tail but Sogat shows up at his window. She visits Sai as her new friend and starts eating rice crackers. Soka tells him that she loves rice and pulls out a rice cooker. She asks to leave it there but Sai refuses. Then, Sai wants to meet up with Junko, and he has to get rid of the girls first. He asks Soga to leave, and she agrees as she thinks that he wants privacy to bend over Kuron, but she leaves her rice cooker with him. Kuron then asks him to lay the pipe as a joke, and he takes that chance to grab her cheeks and pulls her tail to deactivate her. Later, Sunny goes deep into the forest and into an old barrack to meet with Junko. Suddenly, a group of thugs assaults him and knocks him out. Sai has enough and uses his magic to beat them up. The thugs bring out a beaten up Maiwa and Maiwa tells Sai to go berserk. Sai uses his magic to break their legs without breaking a sweat. He focuses on one of the thugs to make him an example and beats the living sh** out of him. Suddenly, Junko shows up and deems Sai as a menace to society. Sai tries to explain that he was assaulted but Junko doesn't listen. He pulls out his magical gun, but it's empty and Junko uses her smoke bomb to vanish like Batman. Meanwhile, Fujiko watches and is confused about why her magical drugs disappear from the gun. The drug was actually a love drug that would make Sai her dog. Fujiko is impressed by his ability and starts playing with her kitty out of excitement. Later, he explains his situation to Kuron and she can't help him since she was deactivated. The teacher Mistuko informs Sai that Junko has filed a complaint against him and declared war. Meanwhile, Junko is in her room, cleaning her sword. She starts thinking about Sai and pulls herself back from the dirty thoughts. She feels someone's presence in the room, and it turns out to be Soga who is invisible. The next day, Junko declares war on Sai and has the school's permission for an hour to fight him, and she recruits anybody that wants to join her. Then the whole school led by Junko attacks Sai, and he plans to just run away for an hour. They start chasing him, wanting a piece of his sweet cheeks, but Sai keeps avoiding them. Then Sai gets cornered with nowhere to run and Junko faces him. He can't use his magic properly and refuses to use it, but Junko doesn't care. She goes to finish him, but Soga shows up to save Sai. She starts preaching like MLK on how Sai and Junko are actually in love, and the students believe her. Junko switches sides with Sai and goes to battle against the students. Suddenly, Kuron shoots a bazooka, and inside it is rice, following Soga's master plan. The students start getting happy at the sight of rice and the battle ends. Later, Kuron detects drugs in the rice and Soga explains that she used the drugs in Sei's gun into the rice. Kuron concludes that the drug given by Fujiko is made by black magic that will make anyone become Fujiko's thirsty slaves. Meanwhile, the girls at the dorm join forces and violate Fujiko together due to the drugs, That's assault, brother. causing her to feel pleasure at the highest level. A few days later, Mitsuko starts a physical exercise and Fujiko watches intently. Sai talks to Miwa about Soga and realizes that no one knows about her true ability. Then, they start the exercise and Junko confronts Sai. The other students gossip about them, but Junko tells Sai that Mitsuko asked her to become his partner for the exercise. They start the exercise and Junko teaches him how to control his mana. Sai rises her and loses control of his magic, blowing a nuke in the middle of class. His bomb leaves Junko unconscious and half-naked on the floor. Later, Mitsuko suggests for Sai to enter the mental self-discipline chamber that will help his mana control. Later, Sai prepares his equipment for the chamber and Kuron tells him that she will join him for fun. Meanwhile, Fujiko is upset that Sai is joining the mental self-discipline chamber and plans to get her hands on it. Her brother warns her for being too evil, but she tells him to shut up. Fujiko is upset that her brother failed her mission like a coward and dies in the process. Afterward, Sai enters the chamber that will stay closed for 12 hours for him to meditate. Kuron joins him inside and shocks him. Then, they start getting chummy with Kuron pushing her melons into Sai. He accidentally holds an invisible girl on her jugs and she starts squealing, and Soga shows herself without clothes with his hands on her melons. Meanwhile, Fujiko is outside the chamber, aiming a gun that will make Sai loyal to her. Inside the chamber, they find an old map of the school. On the map is written that it's a treasure map and Soga starts getting excited like a pirate. Then, Sai tells Soga that he will start his training but Soga starts squirming around as she needs to pee. Sai gives her a waterproof bag to pee into, but she refuses to do it out of embarrassment. Kuron steps in and offers to drink it which shocks Sai and Soga. 
Meanwhile, Fujiko is listening to the bullshit circus that is happening inside the chamber. Kuron can sense Fujiko's mana and suggests that they ask for her help. Fujiko opens the door expecting that Sai will start licking her toes, but Soka eats her instead to go pee. Then Fujiko sees the treasure map and takes it away with her. Meanwhile, Junko is in her room daydreaming about Sai when she receives an encrypted message from her notebook. The message tells her that a member of a rival family is coming. Afterward, Fujiko asks her zombie brother about the map, but he doesn't know shit. The next day, a girl named Eiko shows up and calls out Fujiko for her evil plan of making the Demon King her slave. Fujiko tries to play dumb, but the girl doesn't buy it. Then, the treasure map is leaked to the whole school, and Fujiko realizes that the map has disappeared from her secret lair. Meanwhile, Sai and Kuron see the map all over the school as Stone is leaking it. The map is spread around the school, including to the hands of the student council. Fujiko is pissed and accuses Sai to be behind this, but Kuron finds the true culprit. It turns out to be Soga who is cheerfully spreading the map as she wants others to join the treasure hunt. Later in class, a group of students are heavily injured after getting attacked by monsters during their treasure hunt. Then the student council calls Sai to do his job as a disciplinary committee and inform the whole school to stop their treasure hunt. Later, Sai addresses the whole school and they accuse him of being the person behind the treasure hunt and monster attacks. Eiko shows up from the crowd and attacks Sai on stage. She wraps her legs around his face and makes happy noises as Sai breathes into her kitty. Eiko tells Sai to prove his innocence by finishing the treasure hunt, and the whole school agrees. Sai accepts her challenge with the condition that no one else is allowed to hunt for the treasure. Afterward, the council president tells Sai to fake his search for the treasure, but Sai doesn't buy it as he thinks that she is suspicious. Suddenly, Fujiko calls him and hands him her magical gun to help him find the treasure. Later, Sai, Maiwa, and Kuron prepare for the treasure hunt and Eiko shows up to join them on their adventure. They reach a dungeon and Kuron uses her android powers to encrypt the name of Yamato Buichiro. They go into the dungeon and find a graveyard. They start looking for the name Yamato Buichiro, and they find out that a battle happened here. Sai sees it as disrespect to the dead for battling on graves and Eiko talks shit, calling Sai a wimp for being a little bitch. Sai pulls out his gun given by Fujiko and aims at a monster behind them who demands them to leave. Meanwhile, Junko sneaks into Sai's room and finds Soga sleeping there. She wakes her up and asks where did Sai go, and she tells Junko of his adventure with the girls and Eiko. Junko is in shock to hear Eiko's name and goes to catch up to them. Back in the dungeon, Eiko tries to battle the monster but she gets bit slapped around like a ragdoll. Then, Sai pulls out his gun and defeats the monster with one shot. Eiko jumps on him and starts celebrating and Sai sees the name Yamato Buichiru on a grave. Sai finds a talking doll and it turns out to belong to Fujiko and her zombie brother. Fujiko demands her brother to explain what is going on, but he can't remember which upsets Fujiko to start crying. Suddenly Soga shows up in Fujiko's lair and asks Fujiko to catch up with Sai and the others. Meanwhile, Junko hurries herself to get to Sai as she can't believe that he has already met Eiko, but suddenly she falls into the underground. Back at the dungeon, they discover an abandoned city and a haunted armor attacks them. Sai uses his gun, but it doesn't work, so he uses his magic instead. He overpowers the armor and it runs away. Then they find a phone and discover a cave entrance. Kuron uses her android powers and guides them to the cave. They enter and find a hot spring hidden inside. Sai undresses and steps into the water to discover other areas. Then Eiko strips naked and jumps him from the back to get some alone time together. Meanwhile, Junko is there with them, listening in. Eiko tells Sai that she knows what the treasure is and explains that it's the remains of the previous demon king. Junko attacks them, flashes her kitty, and fails her attack out of shame. Junko tells Sai to stay away from Eiko, and the two girls start fighting. Then, Sai discovers a shrine that is guarded by a giant wolf, and the wolf attacks the girls but not before Sai intercepts. The wolf bites him and falls asleep to his poison. Then, Eiko goes to the shrine, finds a key and throws it to Sai before running away. Then Soga and Fujiko join them as it turns out to be Fujiko, who is behind the poison, and they activate Kuron who doesn't remember anything. Later, Fujiko explains that her brother has something to do with this, and she turns the key which teleports her somewhere else. The others join Fujiko at a hidden shrine, and the student council president, Lily, is there to greet them. She explains that the treasure hunt was their idea and offers a kiss as a prize. But Fujiko calls out their bluff and enters the shrine herself. Lily explains that they are at the previous Demon King's base, and she can't let anyone enter. Meanwhile, Fujiko inserts the key and enters a password which activates the shrine. It awakens a dragon belonging to the Demon King, and it attacks Fujiko. 
Sai tries to save Fujiko, but Lily warns him that meeting the dragon can prove that he is the Demon King. Suddenly, the dragon shows them a vision of the past, and it shows that Fujiko's brother was actually a hero who sacrificed himself to destroy the Demon King. Sai becomes serious and plans to confront the dragon, but Lily doesn't agree for him to do so. Junko joins his battle after getting rizzed countless times in the past. Then, Lily attacks him like she's Luffy with her rubber hands and neutralizes Junko with one look. Lily can't let Sai become the Demon King, but Sai tells her that he has no intention of becoming one. He blows up Lily and runs towards the dragon. He battles and matches the dragon's power to save Fujiko. The dragon demands to see his true power, and Sai happily obliges. Sai starts beating the living sh** out of this lizard bitch, and the dragon who is named Peterhausen acknowledges Sai as his new master. The girls drop their panties seeing Sai's manly strength and Lily kisses him as his prize. Later the dragon demands Sai to stay with him, and he sits on the throne with the girls beside him. Meanwhile, Kuron receives a new order to seduce Sai as their way to control him. A few days later, they play at the beach as they are attending Seaside School, and Soba tries to seduce him with her charms but Sai refuses. Then Kuron joins in and asks him to spread some creamy sunblock on her. Sai remembers a few days ago when Kuron was lying down next to him. Then, she starts putting her hands on his crotch to touch his long Johnson before inviting him to the seaside school where men and women get closer. She pushes him to his limits by telling him to lay the glorious pipe on her. But he doesn't feel the love between them which upsets Caron. The next morning, Caron takes a different approach with his stepsister persona and starts violating his willy which makes him cream in his pants. Sai tells her that she's acting weird but Caron pushes even further to get his willy up. She tests him by wearing a naked apron and acting innocent before going back to the default setting and begging him to stab her with his holy sword. Later at school, Karon keeps trying to seduce Sai and he rejects her every approach. Then, Sai runs away to his dragon, Peterhausen and Soga, is already there sleeping on the dragon's body. Karon pops up and starts teasing him again, acting jealous of him being attracted to Soga. Then Karon tells Sai that she wants to know his true feelings so she can fulfill his every desire. Back to the present at the beach, Sai has his hand on Kuron's peaches and Junko is angry seeing it. Kuron moves fast and puts his hand on Junko's melons, so she won't be jealous and Junko slices his head with her sword. Later, Kuron apologizes to Junko for her actions and tells her that she will train both her and Sai to become masters at shoving hard things in their holes. The students around them listen in and gossip about them. Afterward, Sai uses his riz and asks Junko to swim with him and she agrees while also inviting Soga. They play in the sea together, and Soga finds herself a sea cucumber. She starts playing with a slimy and long cucumber, which makes Junko uncomfortable. Soga keeps jerking the cucumber, and it splurts out white cream on Junko, oh! which freaks her out. Later, Sai helps her clean the white cream from her face while making her fold with his charms. Suddenly, Karone pulls down her top to reveal her bare jugs and tells him that she wants to set the mood, but Sai has enough. He scolds her for being inappropriate towards other people and tells her to knock that off. She apologizes and tells him that she just wants to be with him before leaving with her head down. After their trip, Sai feels that someone is watching him and sees Maiwa in the distance looking like a little bit. Maiwa explains that this is his hometown and he is depressed as there's a legend about the Demon King in his hometown. Maiwa continues to explain that the legend explains that when the Demon King is revived, a monster will show up in the middle of the ocean but a hero will stand to defeat the monster and the Demon King. Maiwa believes that the legend is a fake and gets upset over it before running away. Suddenly, Sai feels the presence of a monster and thinks the legend is true. Later, Sai sneaks out in the middle of the night to find who's watching him and Kuron comes with him. Meanwhile, Fujiko is pitching to the dragon a degenerate future where she and Sai become a couple while girls play with themselves as their entertainment and they are emperors. Peter Hazen supports Fujiko's messed up dream but Lily shows up. Lily informs them that the Academy will isolate Sai and Lily is looking to rebel against her higher-ups. She knows about the plan of using Kuron to seduce Sai as a way to control him, and she wants to get involved in that. She then declares war on Fujiko as her black mage friends will look to use Sai for their own personal interest. Lily leaves and Peter Hazen praises her ambition. Then Fujiko looks to inform Sai with this information, but her notebook can't reach him. Meanwhile, Sai and Karon split up trying to chase the person watching Sai. Soga shows up and informs him that a group of people wants him dead. Then she starts being an idiot and drinks alcohol before hugging Sai and nibbling his ears like they used to do. Sai remembers his past with her and Soga falls asleep after getting drunk. Soga wakes up and tries to kiss him, but Karon kicks him from the back to stop him. 
Then, a gunshot is heard and it's Corone who got shot. Meanwhile, the bird spirit Alexis student as a hero, and it turns out to be Maiwa. Back with Sai, Corone falls after getting shot and tells him that she's failing her mission. Sai is confused as shit, and Corone says her farewell for failing her mission. She opens a portal and walks through it. Soka finally is sober and tells him that she received information from Fujiko that Corone was on a mission to seduce him to control him. Meanwhile, Maiwa is sitting alone when his sister comes to talk to him. He talks about the Demon King being his friend, even though he will become the hero in the future. Then, Miwa hears the villagers talk shit about him being a wimp that is nothing like a hero, and it hurts his feeling. Maiwa puts his smile back on and goes back to his dorm. The next day, the little sister goes to Sai and the others to tell them that Maiwa is a hero and asks if Sai is the Demon King. Sai tells her that she's wrong about both him and Maiwa, but the little bastard refuses to believe it and runs away. Maiwa chases her with tears in his eyes and Soga follows suit. Junko gets angry at Sai for saying that Maiwa is not a hero, because maybe deep down he wishes he is a hero. Then, Maiwa and Soga look for the little sister, and ends up near a lake. Maiwa tells her about the legend of the lake, and suddenly the sound of a monster can be heard. Maiwa tries to cope by saying the sound and legend are fake and was created by his family. Suddenly, they hear another sound and go towards it. They find a freaky old man in the middle of the lake, and he summons a monster from the waters. The little sister is there and the old man starts doing creepy stuff to her. Maiwa tries to use magic, but fails as the monster drains man around it. Then, Soka approaches from the back and gets caught, but not before freeing the little sister. The old man lets go of the girls and starts attacking Maiwa. He starts making Maiwa his b and kicks him to the monster. Later, Sai and Junko arrives and the old man introduces himself as Mr. X. The old man pulls out the little sister and the naked Soka like dogs in chains. Mr. X tells Sai that Maiwa is dead, and so he gets angry. Sai attacks the old man and saves the girls. Then Mr. X pulls out his power of playing Taylor Swift and defends Sai. He starts beating Sai to a pulp and tells the girls that their sweet cheeks are next. Meanwhile, Maiwa is drowning in his weakness and decides to stop being a little bit. On the surface, Sai and the others are still fighting Mr. X and his power of noise. Inside a cave, Maiwa is pulling a sword from a rock to become Saber. He pulls out the sword and gets a power-up to become a Chad. The sword turns into a bracelet and transforms him into a Power Ranger. Meanwhile, Sai figures out the old man's magic trick and beats the old man so hard it switches art styles. Mr. X laughs and tells Sai his whole plan like a supervillain of starting a war as his greater purpose. Then he shoots out laser at the girls, but Corone shows up and protects them. Corone starts roasting Mr. X and reveals his government name before knocking him out with one punch. After beating the old man, the giant monster is still running a rampage in the village. Suddenly, Maiwa pulls up in his new Iron Man suit and defeats the monster without breaking a sweat. Maiwa poses and introduces himself as a legendary hero called Brave. Then, Maiwa attacks the old man but Sai stops him. Maiwa runs away and comes back in his loser form while pretending he doesn't know anything. The next day, Corone informs that her mission to seduce Sai is still on, but she wants him to marry a good woman from a good family. She tells him to marry Junko and start making babies to get into her family. Junko starts freaking out and runs away. Corone teases him that she's willing to play second fiddle behind Junko, which sets off Sai, but she's just joking. Meanwhile, Eiko reports back to her boss, and he tells Eiko that the future has changed its course with Sai rewriting it through his rapid rise. Later, Sai dreams about his meeting with Soga when they were little, and he promises her that they will meet again if she keeps her hairpin with her. Sai wakes up under a tree to Soga greeting him, and she asks him about his birthday, which is on Christmas Day. Then, Sai asks her if they have met before and Soga doesn't remember their meeting when he gave her the hairpin. She then asks him to celebrate her birthday with her, and he accepts her request. Meanwhile, Fujiko is summoning monsters for when Sai becomes the Demon King, and she starts imagining herself making sweet love to Sai. Suddenly, one of the monsters starts violating her jugs and wraps itself around Fujiko. The monster tries to get between her legs. She has enough and attacks the monster, and she obliterates it to pieces. Then, she finds a magical beast egg, and Peterhausen shows up to confront her. She hides the egg behind her back, and the dragon comments that more monsters will appear as the Demon King has awakened. The next months, more monsters start appearing in the legendary hero. Brace is taking care of them like he's Superman. Meanwhile, Sai and his friends are enjoying themselves in Sai's dorm room. Sai tells Soga to stop it around and go to class, which she kept missing as she runs away. Then, they start discussing the nature of magic, and Corona explains that someone's magical strength depends on God's blessing for them, and the stronger they are, the closer they are to God. Sai reiterates that he wants to change the world with his own two hands, 
And Maiwa gets scared hearing Sai say it, as it's the same thing the previous Demon King said years ago. Maiwa feels conflicted as he is now a hero, but Sai is also his best friend. Later, Sai tries to get Soga to class, and she turns invisible to run away again. He starts chasing the flying panties around and loses Soga after she takes off everything she's wearing. At night, Sai discusses Soga with Karon, and Karon suggests that Soga feels out of place for being friends with the Demon King. The next day, Sai tells Soga to touch grass and stay away from him, but she refuses and hugs him instead. Junko sees it happening and gets worried. Then Junko tells Sai that Soga being his friend is an issue, and Junko asks Sai about his feelings towards Soga. Sai answers that he holds no special feelings and Junko walks away. At night, Junko starts overthinking about what she did like a true introvert, and remembers Kuron telling her to marry Sai. Meanwhile, Fujiko is trying to use magic to hatch the magical egg, but she keeps failing. Then, the egg floats away while Fujiko is asleep. The next day, Soga gets her hands on the magic egg and plans to make an omelet from it. Fujiko wakes up to see the egg is gone and suspects one person behind it. Later, the egg starts glowing, and Sai throws it away. At night, the egg has become a giant, and it hatches into a giant two-headed chicken. It starts attacking Sai and the others, but Fujiko shows up claiming that she is the chicken's master. The chicken doesn't give a sh** and eats Fujiko like she's a worm. The bee starts poking holes in her clothes and Sai saves her with his magic. Then the chicken grows bigger and flies to the city. Maiwa has enough and transforms into brave to pursue the chicken. The giant chicken starts attacking the city and Maiwa pulls up as the hero, brave, to stop the beast. Maiwa goes Colonel Sanders and turns the giant chicken into KFC. Then he saves a girl, and she turns out to be an idol he loves named Yuri. He raises her and Yuri kisses Maiwa like every hero at the end of every movie. Maiwa flies away and the city thanks him for saving them. The next day, the student council lets off Sai with the chicken incident, but they are cautious as the chicken was attracted to his powers. Then, Soga agrees to come to class and Sai overjoys hearing it. Soga tells him to not forget about her birthday promise, and Sai promises that he won't. Meanwhile, Junko comes to Karon about her promising Junko, a marriage with Sai and Karon tells her that she has arranged with Junko's parents a meeting which shocks Junko. A few years ago, an old man came to an orphanage and gave the children food as the will of God. Sai pulls up and says that God is not real which causes the old man to call Sai a little bitch that deserved having no daddy. Whoa, hey, 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 hey! In the present, Junko calls her father and he tells her that he's ready for Sai to marry her and join the family. Then, Junko gets nervous and starts thinking about how to break the news to Sai. She starts imagining all the scenarios that could happen and other students just see her like she's hot on mushrooms. Karon pops up and offers to help her talk to Sai using her Doraemon device that can track down lies. Then they go to Sai and invite Sai and Maiwa to her hometown, with Maiwa being the accidental unwanted plus one. Meanwhile, the principal meets a mysterious blonde man from the Ministry of Magic. Sai overhears their conversation on how the evil old man from the other day was under his order. The blonde man tells the principal and warns him that the magic beasts have started showing up because of Sai's rise as the Demon King. The next day, Sai, Maiwa, and Karon join Junko in her hometown. Junko wants to give Sai a lunchbox, but gets flustered by his handsome face. Later, they arrive at their destination and Junko's sister, Yuko, attacks them as a joke. Maiwa recognizes her as Yuri, the idol he beats his meat to at night. Yuko starts teasing her sister about bending over to Sai, but Junko tells her to shut her bowl up. Shut up, bitch. Then Yuko grows curious about Sai, as he smells like magical beasts. Later, Sai meets Junko's father and asserts dominance by telling the old man that he's Junko's daddy now. The old man is impressed by the size of his balls and announces a feast to celebrate his daughter finding a man to marry. Later, Junko has a hot bath and realizes that Sai misunderstands something. She starts getting thirsty, wanting to marry Sai and have his long meat to herself every night. At night, Junko visits Sai in his room and presents her body to him, but Sai turns into a sigma and declines her. Junko realizes that Sai didn't know anything about their engagement and apologizes. Instead, Sai apologizes for not realizing sooner, and his kindness makes Junko cry, and she asks him to forget everything that happened before leaving. Suddenly, a group of ninjas ambush Sai after he makes Junko cry. Sai runs away and the ninjas chase him, but the ninjas get into a trap, and it turns out Eiko set it up. Eiko offers Sai to hide in her house and join her family instead of Junko's peasant family. Eiko offers to go to bed with him, but Sai refuses which pisses off Eiko. She starts talking shit about Soga to piss him off as it turns out it's her birthday today. Meanwhile, 
Sobat is celebrating her birthday alone and wishes that Sai is there to celebrate with her. A group of ninjas is there to assassinate Soga, and Sai gets angry after finding out that Eiko's family sent them. Sai starts going Super Saiyan to demolish Eiko, but Yuko intervenes, which gives Eiko the opening to run away. Yuko demands Sai to answer why he came to this house and made Junko cry, but Sai tells her that he will explain after finding out what Eiko's family's intentions are. Suddenly, Koron and Mewa show up as they have been listening all this time, and Sai asks Koron to transport him to the academy to save Soga. Koron refuses to help him as she is following orders and pulls out a gun from her Doraemon bag to stop him. She then drops the gun and hugs Sai to give him an opening to pull her tail and deactivate her. Sai deactivates Koron, but Yuko suddenly drops as she gets infected by a beast mana. Sai makes a decision and opens a portal to the academy. At the academy, Sobat is getting violated by multiple weird dudes, but the blonde man shows up and saves her. He uses his sword and obliterates every single one of them, and one of the freaks calls him his real name, Yamato Buichiru. Suddenly, Sai shows up, and Yamato explains that he saved Soga to sacrifice her body to the gods. Sai doesn't accept his cheesy bull and tells him to square up. Yamato attacks first and chops off his arm, but Sai uses his Demon King powers and grows another one. Suddenly, Fujiko shows up with an army of magic beasts and tells Sai that he can order the beasts around. With the new backup, Sai challenges Yamato to a battle to the death. The beasts start going crazy and destroy the academy. Yamato curses Sai as the Demon King who will destroy the world and summons a sword to battle Sai. Meanwhile, Maiwa is in his Power Ranger form and flies to the Academy to see the horror of the Demon King. Eiko is also watching and her father shows up wounded after getting b***ed around by Yamato. He tells Eiko to forget about Sai as he has become an enemy of the family. Eiko doesn't accept it and stabs her own father to death before taking over his position. Suddenly behind her, one of Yamato's goons shows up and he starts mocking her. Meanwhile, Junko and her father watch the battle at the academy, and they choose to ally with Eiko's family to fight the Demon King. The father shows Junko a special katana, called the Sohaya's Blade, which no one has been able to unsheathe. Then, her grandma shows up and declares the blade will belong to Junko from now on. She tells Junko to make her own decision, and that katana will follow her will and spirit to do the right thing. Afterward, Eiko and her ninja army have gathered to join the battle. Meanwhile, Sai and Yamato are battling each other with Yamato making Sai his bitch, using a special sword that stops Sai from healing. Fujiko saves Sai and runs away with a plan to summon the dragon Peterhausen. Yamato chases them, and the principal shows up to help them hold back Yamato. The group enters the dungeon and Lily is there to show them that Sai has made the academy turns to sh**. She supports Sai and tells him to go to the dragon, but not before telling him to not destroy everything. Outside the academy, Junko and her sister Yuko join the battle. Eiko has become the head of the two families, and she sees the Sohaya's blade in Junko's possession, and she wants to take it when Junko dies in battle. She sends Junko and Yuko to the front line with the hopes that they will die. Junko and Yuko accept her order without resisting. Then the whole world reports the battle like it's a concert. Yuko gets excited and runs to the battlefield herself and Brave is there to join the battle. Meanwhile, Sai has reached the dragon and Peterhausen can't wait to join the battle alongside his master, the Demon King. Sai gets on top of the dragon with the goal of protecting Soga and joins the battle. Meanwhile, the principal is battling Yamato when he feels a powerful vibration from the ground, and out comes Sai and his dragon. The whole world starts panicking seeing the Demon King in action and Junko hesitates to attack him. She can't pull out Sohaya's blade and uses her spare blade instead to attack Sai. Her attack is useless, and she feels conflicted fighting the man she loves. Sai catches her and uses his Riz to convince her to not join this battle and stay safe so he can lay the pike later. Suddenly, Brave attacks Peterhausen and causes damage to the dragon's skin. Peterhausen feels a burning sensation and gets fired up to battle the legendary hero, Brave. Meanwhile, Eiko orders Junko and Yuko to infiltrate the school and find the device controlling the magical beasts. The two sisters get deeper and almost die facing a black rubber man, but a few ninjas show up and help them. In the sky, Brave demands her best friend the Demon King to answer why he's doing this, and Sai tells Maiwa that he is defying God himself who wants to take Soga from him. The dragon almost eats Maiwa, but he unlocks a more powerful form and drains the dragon from his magic. Meanwhile, the principal is still chatting with Yamato about how they fought the Demon King in the past and Yamato reveals that he was fighting for a girl and wants to become the Demon King himself. Then a giant ship from the government shows up and starts attacking Sai and his dragon. The dragon flies closer to the ship, and the ship crashes itself into the dragon 
and kamikaze itself to the ground. A long time ago in the future, Yamato was a time traveler, and he was cucked by the demon king who took his girl and kissed her like he was Griffin. In the present, Sai and Petterhausen just got yeeted by the ship, but they survived the impact. Maiwa goes to look for Sai and stumbles on the injured principal and Yamato. Maiwa goes to defend the principal, but his powers as Braid disappear, as it's a device created by Yamato in the first place. Yamato goes to attack principal, but Maiwa uses his Jiga brain and tells Yamato that he needs Maiwa to defeat the Demon King as he holds the legendary hero, Brave, on his wrist. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, Fujiko is battling a creepy intruder who is looking to destroy the device that is controlling the magical beasts. On the outside, the ninjas get closer to the school, but Lily shows up and cleans down house. Lily reveals to the world that Eiko stabbed his own father, the head of the ninjas, which shocks everyone. Eiko saves face by claiming Lily is lying, and they get into battle. The other student council members show up to help Lily in her fight and support Fujiko and Soga in the dungeon. Then, Yamato shows up in the dungeon and Fujiko recognizes him as his brother's murderer. Suddenly, Soga gets possessed and tells Yamato that he's on the wrong side. Yamato has enough and kidnaps Soga with Fujiko not being able to do anything like a useless hoe. Fujiko helps the council member and runs away from the dungeon to find another way to defeat her enemy. Meanwhile, Eiko orders Junko to go and defeat Lily and she is upset at the order and wishes for Sai to turn the situation around as the Demon King. Then, Junko confronts Lily and her council members. Junko asks for Lily to stand down, but she refuses so Junko orders her ninjas to attack them. Suddenly the ninjas get shot at, and it turns out to be dolls that are controlled by Yamato's goon. The ninjas fall, and Junko gets one shot by Lily. Then, Lily goes to Eiko to attack her, but Eiko strikes Yuko who is her hostage. Suddenly, Brave shows up and stops Eiko from hurting Yuko. She lifts up Yuko and follows Yamato who is working with Maiwa. Lily attacks Eiko, but she runs away and Yamato's goon asks Lily to work together. Lily rejects him and calls him a little willy wib loser, but then Fujiko shows up to help Lily. Then, Lily goes full One Punch Man and yeets the goon in one hit. It turns out the goon is just a doll and his true form is hiding somewhere. Suddenly, the giant government ship rises up as Sai is beneath it, and he lifts it up alongside the principal, combining their powers. Afterward, Sai finds out that Yamato has kidnapped Soga and plans to chase them. Fujiko asks to come with him, but he rejects her and explains that Soga is important to him as she can change his fate. Then Eiko and her ninjas show up and Junko tries to attack them, but her loyal ninjas tell Junko to stop as it will be considered treason towards the family. Eiko tells Junko to go after the Demon King, but she refuses and manages to pull out the special katana, so Ina's blade, as her heart is in the right place. She decides to betray her family for the man she loves, but her ninjas fully support her after seeing the blade shine. Then Junko calls for strength from the blade and performs a Bankai straight from Bleach, which defeats all of Eiko's ninjas. With Eiko the only one left, Junko delivers the final blow, but Kurum stops her and tells Junko that Eiko has to face justice. Eiko runs away but her father pops up in front of her, and he's alive in the form of a half-robot to stop her. Then Sai and his dragon fly to pursue Yamato with Junko hoping that he will come back so she can be his baby mom in the future. The two of them soar through the sky and Brave is there to stop them. The two best friends start arguing against one another and end up battling each other. Peter Hazen throws Sai and he goes head-on against Brave. Sai starts getting heavily injured and Maiwa is begging for him to stop. Then, Maiwa stops his attacks and explodes like a nuke. They both start falling from the sky and Sai romantically says his goodbyes to his best friend Maiwa before heading for Yamato. They both fall and Maiwa is unconscious due to the fall damage. Yuko sees Brave's true identity and hugs Maiwa as she doesn't care who he is. Yuko starts malfunctioning as the curse on her neck acts up when Sai is near her. Sai tells Maiwa that he will defeat God and make Peter House in the new god. Maiwa hates his idea as it will make Sai look like the villain, but he keeps going and flies towards Yamato. Meanwhile, Yamato is leaving dead bodies and his tracks at the Ministry of Magic. Female guards try to stop him, but he gives them quick work and makes them look weak. Yamato continues carrying Soga to sacrifice her to God and puts her on the floor to activate a giant machine. Soga suddenly gets possessed and starts telling Yamato to stop his madness, as he is not the chosen one to become the Demon King. Yamato starts crying, and he hugs the possessed Soga. Soga gets her body back and tries to fight back, but Yamato holds her and carries on his plans. Suddenly, Sai shows up and starts preaching like Naruto about how they are similar. Yamato doesn't give a shit and starts throwing hands. 
Imato gets the upper hand using his weapon but Sai manages to counter using Shadow Clone Jutsu. The half-chopped female guards tell Sai that it's his fate to become one with Soga and sacrifice her, but Sai tells the bitch to shut their stupid ass mouths and that he will destroy God and his system for trying to sacrifice Soga. The female guards warn Sai that he made the wrong choice and suddenly the system activates its defense. Then, everything starts collapsing and the system that is deemed as God flies away. Sai calls Peterhausen to chase it down and Yamato asks Sai why he's doing this. Sai turns his back to look cool and tells Yamato that he refuses to be the Demon King just because some system that calls itself God tells him to be. Then Sai and the dragon go full kamikaze with the intention of blowing the system and Soga is begging him to stop. Peterhausen blows a hole in the machine and flies inside to a barrage of attacks from the android guards. Peterhausen tanks the damage and goes to the center to control everything. It will take time so Sai has to protect Peterhausen from all the guards. The guards cause some damage to the dragon, so Peterhausen tells Sai that he will destroy Sai's limiter so he can use his full power with the price of his body. Sai turns Super Saiyan and makes the guards his bitch, but it's still not enough. He opens a black hole and Peterhausen tells him it's a bad idea. Suddenly Soka shows up and Peterhausen tells her to get away as he will sacrifice himself for Sai after the black hole explodes. Peterhausen gives Soga one of his teeth as a souvenir and Soga hugs Sai from the back, telling him that she will be there with him. Then, Soga gets transferred to another dimension and meets a girl who was sacrificed in the past to the Demon King. She tells Soga to give Yamato peace in his life and change the fate of Sai completely. Then the black hole explodes like a giant nuclear bomb and destroys everything, including Peterhausen. Afterward, Junko comes with backup to save Sai and Soga and informs Sai that she has betrayed her family for him. Maiwa and Yuko show up and Yuko feels fine touching Sai as her curse is gone after God gets blown up. Yuko tells Sai to marry her sister, Junko, as the Demon King died in the explosion and Sai is all that's left. Later, they check the destroyed school and the girls regroup around Sai. Kuron tells Sai that everyone's memories are altered to forget about what happened. The next day, everything goes back to normal with Kuron still observing Sai. He thanks Peterhausen for sacrificing himself and saving everything. Then Sai goes back to school and rizzes Junko in magic class. Soga informs Sai that her other self was the one who changed everyone's memories, making both Fujiko and the students' council go back to normal. Meanwhile, Sai goes back to the bird to find out if his fate has changed. But the bird tells him that he is still the Demon King, and everyone goes chaotic again. If you enjoyed this recap, then clap the like button and comment I want to be a Demon King Daddy instead of a little hero bit. Subscribe to the channel if you're yet to for more plot-filled animes. If you like anime, a caps like this, then watch this video right here.